I've got an incredible guest for you guys today. His name is Brad Yates. He is known internationally for his creative and often humorous use of emotional freedom techniques. Um, We are talking about tapping today. And Brad is (laughs) so uber experienced in this field. It was just so amazing to get all the info and the wisdoms straight from a one of the most incredible sources possible. So thank you, Brad. Um, a, l- a little background about Brad. Brad is the author of the best-selling children's book, The Wizard's Wish, co-author of the bestseller Freedom at Your Fingertips, and a featured expert in the film, The Tapping Solution. Uh, he has also been a presenter at a number of events, including Jack Canfield's Breakthrough to Success, has done uh, teleseminars with the secret stars, Bob Doyle and Joe Vitale, and has been uh, heard internationally on a number of internet radio talk shows. He also has over a thousand videos on YouTube that have been viewed over 44 million times. So yeah, he's been doing this for a minute. Started that over 15 years ago, talking about tapping on YouTube. I don't know about you, but I wasn't tapping 15 years ago. (laughs) Um, I have a very uh, humble, non-informed viewpoint in this episode because I've only done a little bit of tapping but what I have done has been really incredible. And I was grateful for the reminder about tapping from Brad today because it was like, dude, add that to your morning routine. <laughs> so um, we'll go ahead and get into it. If you want to learn more about anything that we're talking about today, you can visit his website. It is tapwithbrad.com. Um, you can also find him on Instagram as tapwithbrad and I'm sure all over the place. So find him and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Here is Brad Yates. Okay. So Brad, I, uh, know that you've been on the tapping scene for a while now. Um, I read that, you know, you were one of the first 15 years ago on YouTube and I think of being on YouTube doing tapping 15 years ago. I'm like, yeah, I, I mean, I I fully admit I'm one of those that just found out about it in the last couple of years, (laughs) you know, and some of the listeners may have, this might be new to them completely. Um, my experience is limited with it. I have done a bit through an app. I've had some you know, breakthroughs, crying, huge (laughs) releases, even in my limited experience. I'm like, there's something to that tapping thing. (laughs) Yes, there (laughs) is. (laughs) So I'm really excited to have you come help us have a deeper understanding. And I'm wondering if you could just very simply explain what tapping is, and then we'll kind of go into like why, you know, how it can help us in our lives. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Tara. Um, So Tapping, also known as emotional freedom techniques or EFT. Uh, and we call it tapping because it's literally a process of tapping with our fingertips on key places around the face and torso primarily. And for those of you who are new to that, I, I know it may sound strange. I, I know your audience is much more evolved than the average person. So maybe like, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's originally based on acupuncture. So for thousands of years in Chinese medicine, they've said there's a flow of energy through the body along these pathways that are called meridians. And when the energy is flowing naturally, we experience our natural state of health and well-being, physically and emotionally. When that energy gets stuck or disrupted in some way, we don't feel so good. Mm -hmm. Uh, We don't think as clearly, we don't make the best choices, and we have all kinds of unfortunate consequences. So in traditional Chinese medicine, the doctor would stick needles in these key points to stimulate that healthy flow of energy. And we're just using our fingertips to stimulate those points, get that energy flowing. It sends signals to the brain to primarily calm down the stress response. Mm. And when you consider that most, if not all of the issues that trouble us physically and emotionally are either at least caused by or worsened by stress, then you can see that a simple technique for down-regulating stress can be so beneficial in so many areas of life. Mm-hmm. And then could you, thank you for that. And could you also explain, you know, I, I guess for me, one of the, in my very, very amateur <laughs> experience with tapping, <laughs> one of the things that really um, spoke to me with it was also the, the way uh, the words are, were, in, I was encouraged to phrase my words also felt like a huge stress reduction technique in terms of giving myself space. It's, it is okay that I feel like this, or I am, you know, that can you get a little bit into like the, the verbiage or the why behind that of how that's created? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Even though tapping in and of itself, 
uh, has benefits and will help to downregulate stress. The, the process that we do generally in, involves some kind of uh, talk therapy as well. Mm -hmm. And when we first start out, we look at what's bothering us because you can use tapping when you're feeling great in order to feel greater. Mm. I do it first thing in the morning. I don't wake up in a bad mood. I just go, okay, I want to I be as clear yeah. as possible. So I might say affirmations or prayers or things like that just to be in a good place. But in general, the, the basic version of, of EFT is you take whatever's bothering you. So even though I'm really angry at Bob, or even though I've got this stomach ache, and then we rate it on a scale of zero to 10, notice where in our bodies we feel it. And then we start off with a statement, uh, we tap on the side of the hand and we say, even though I feel this anger, or even though I feel have this knot in my stomach, and uh, you know, even, even though I have this, I choose to love and accept myself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will say, no, you're talking about the negative. You're only supposed to focus on the positive. Mm -hmm. But as you said, it, it's, it's acknowledgement. Acknowledging it's, it because what yeah. we resist persists. Right. So, you know, if you break your leg, you don't go to the doctor and say, let's talk about my arm because my arm feels so good. <laughs> I want to focus on that. So we, we want to acknowledge that stuff that, that's going on. And because if we don't, it's going to slow us down. If we have a nail in our tire, you know, go, I don't, I'm not looking at the tires. I'm going to, I'm going to think about what's, what's great about my car. We're going to be uh, slowed down. So we want to be able to say, Hey, even though I've got this nail in my tire, I choose to love and accept myself. And it's just a very compassionate way of looking at whatever's going on with us. And then it gives us the freedom to address it and transform it. Uh, it speaks to me so much. I have a little analogy I call a toddler behind the baby gate. So what I mean by that is like, if you've had kids and you've got like a one-year-old and you're trying, you're on the phone and you're doing all the things and the it's shaking, it's like, eh, you know, it's just trying to get your attention. If you just keep ignoring it, what does it do? It just keeps getting louder. The baby just, they start shaking it. They're like banging. They just break down crying. And you go over and you just like simply acknowledge like, hey, and they're like, I saw a bug. And you're like, okay. And then they just walk off. Like, that's kind of how I see it when we ignore these things that are going inside of us. You know, it's like, sometimes it just needs to be seen and acknowledged and held. And like, I see you, I hear you like, you know, or it yes. just kind of gets louder, kind of gets louder. And I see that in physiology too. I see that in health, you know, so. And there's plenty of people who will think if I ignore the toddler long enough, eventually <laughs> he'll fall asleep. <laughs> yes. But then he'll uh, feel neglected and go into therapy for years. So the problem is not resolved by ignoring it. <laughs> right. And they'll get real loud next time. They're like, I'm going to have to be real loud because this person does not hear me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay. Um, On these like acupuncture, because I'm also very, you know, I'm definitely not an acupuncturist. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not informed in this area either. Are there like combinations of different, uh, you know, points that you hit that create certain outcomes? Or is it just, if you want to free up this spot, you hit that, you know, can you give us like a little bit of the logic behind the, where you're tapping? Yeah, absolutely. So the points that we use are, are, are points along particular meridians and the meridians are associated with different organs in the body. And those organs are generally associated with different emotions. So when okay. Dr. Roger Callahan first came up with this technique, Back in uh, 1980 or something like that, he, he sort of stumbled upon it working with a woman with a lifelong water phobia. And he'd been mm. learning about acupressure. And in an attempt, he, he asked her, What is the physical component of your fear? And she said, Oh, I get a knot in my stomach. And he mm. thought, Okay, well, the, this um, one of the endpoints for uh, the stomach meridian is right under the eye. So, how about if we just tap there and see what happens. And not only did the knot in her stomach go away, but the lifelong water phobia went away. And he thought, oh, wow. that's very interesting. Uh, yeah. So he started experimenting with different patients. And mm -hmm. he had this, uh, this process of trying to diagnose what, in the partic uh, what the particular issue was. And then he'd come up with different algorithms. So you know, for a particular issue, he might tap the eyebrow, then under the uh, chin, and then the collarbone. For another one, he might tap the side of the eye and then under the eye and had all these different algorithms for different issues. And that's hmm. what they call thought field therapy. And then one of his first students was a gentleman named Gary Craig, who had his degree in engineering from Stanford and thinking like an engineer, he thought, how do we simplify this? Right. <laughs> and he said, okay, if we just tap all of these points, because we generally use eight points. 
So it takes very little time to tap eight points. You know, we tap these points between five and 10 times. So it's like, why not just tap all of the points top to bottom and not worry about which points should be tapped. And he found mm. that he got the same great results mm. uh, without having to go into these different algorithms. So there mm. are times where we might focus on a particular point for a particular issue. Mm. Uh, I, I do that occasionally, but for the most part, we don't worry too much about which point we're tapping as we say certain things. We just go through the process. And there are a lot of times where we can just be tapping on one point and got, get a lot of benefit from it. Mm. Would you mind sharing uh, roughly like where those points are that yeah, you tap? <laughs> so the, the first point we tap is for the setup and it's right here on the uh, edge of the hand. So and the tap outside, with, uh, for people on audio, yeah. uh, like the outside. The edge of your, of your hand right hand. between the pinky and the wrist. Nice. And uh, generally tap with two or three fingers with the fingertips of the index and middle finger. And so we gently tap there and we make the, the setup phrase, even though I have this issue, I choose to love and accept myself. Mm. And we'll repeat that three times. And it just kind of creates a, a safe space, a, an opening yeah. for the process to happen. Because so right. often we are fighting against whatever issues we have. Mm. It's like, we're trying to deny it. It's like, I'm just accepting it. And I choose mm. to love and accept myself, even though there's something here that's not perfect. Nice. Then we, uh, then the points we go through in the sequence, starting with the eyebrow point. So right at the beginning of your eyebrow, right near the center of your face on, on either side. And they, as I said, we gently tap these points five to 10 times and we'll repeat the reminder phrase. So this issue, this anger at Bob, this stomach ache, whatever it is that we're bothered by, we'll repeat that on each point. So right here at the beginning of the eyebrow, we follow the eyebrow out to the side of the eye. So right there at the corner of the eye socket. And right under the middle of your eye, just above your cheek. Just below your nose, right above your upper lip. And right below your lower lip, just above your chin. The next point is the collarbone point. And if you feel where your collarbones just about come together, there's that little U shape at the base of your throat. And you can use all of your fingertips or even make a fist and tap right there where the collarbones just about come together. Next point is uh, the armpit, just below the armpit. So it's about four inches below your armpit. So it's right about bra strap level. And I'm sure even the guys can figure out where that is. And just tap mm -hmm. that with all your fingertips. And then the last point we'll tap is the top of the head. So with all of your fingertips, just tap in around the crown of your head. And then you take a deep breath. And then you would check in again. So if, uh, you know, oh, I'm so angry at Bob, I feel it in my shoulders, it's an eight out of 10. Mm -hmm. We tap through and check it again. It may go from an eight down to a zero like that. It may go from an eight down to a 7.75. But uh, when we're doing the tapping, it's often like peeling the layers of the onion. So we might be tapping along going this anger at Bob, this anger, oh my goodness, it's not even Bob. What Bob did reminds me of what Cindy did to me in the third grade, all this anger at Cindy, all this anger at Cindy. Nice. And I could be clearing up decades of stress that I've been carrying in my body, mm -hmm. not because I'm bad or stupid, but because something in my mind at that point said, this is important. Remember it. So we carry this stress and it directs our lives in so many ways. You know, it's like mm -hmm. a, an electric fence around a, a yard. And when we try to make certain changes, oh, you know, I'd really like to experience this in my life. I'd like to experience better health. I'd like to have better relationships, more mm -hmm. money. And we come up against that electric wire and we're not even aware of it. Mm -hmm. We, uh, at a conscious level, just something says, oh, back off, back off. And mm -hmm. because, you know, you remember that thing that happened with Cindy in the third grade, you don't need to remember, just trust us. Just right. don't go there. Right. And so we're sitting there going, gosh, I wish my life was different. And I wonder why, and at an unconscious level, we're stopping ourselves because when we push up against that barrier, there's a stress response saying this isn't safe. Mm. So uh, the tapping helps to calm that down. And we start to go, nice. oh, you know what? This is safe. And hey, this electric fence isn't even attached to anything. <laughs> there's no electricity here. And nice. I can uh, expand my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I love it because it's like a combination of like freeing up the energy with the tapping, like letting the energy flow and then also creating safety within yourself. 
That's the key thing. Yeah. That's huge. That's, that's everything, right? Because, you know, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Kristen Neff's work. She's a compassion researcher. Um, she has a book called self-compassion and I love it because she talks about how very often like this lack of safety within ourselves, like this, you know, being really hard on yourself or forcing yourself or you just look at this really intense energy is really what blocks us to be able to grow because it's not safe. We don't have a safe space inside of ourselves to just say, to just actually look at the things, you know, it's like, oh, you should have worked out yesterday or you shouldn't have eaten that milkshake, Ugh. you know, and it becomes this unsafe space and you don't yeah. process. And I, it's so beautiful that not only are you creating that through the, the verbiage, but also allowing the energy to flow so things can kind of come out. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it, it really is an act of self-compassion. And yeah. we we are taught to do it the other way. Uh, if, you, right. uh, if you eat some cookies, you need to beat yourself up, right? You know, because if I'm really hard on myself, then I'll have per perfect physical health. Right. Well, if that worked, yeah, everybody would be in perfect shape. <laughs> exactly. They'd all be miserable because right. it's not a it's not a a healthy way to do it. But that's what we're taught, and mm -hmm. and also it, it's recognizing self sabotage is simply misguided self love. Mm -hmm. So if I'm trying mm -hmm. to get in better shape and I'm mm -hmm. eating uh, a box of cookies, mm -hmm. you know, from the outside observer, that's total self-sabotage. So I want to be, rather than beating myself up, I want to mm -hmm. go in and say, why is part of me thinking this is an act of self-love? Right. Well, because I had a really crappy day and my, my experience tells me that when I eat cookies, I'm happier. Right. So they're always a happy memory. Right. And I know that it's going to sabotage my health goals, but that's in the future. And right now mm -hmm. I need care right now. I'm in triage mode. Right. And so we're, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to protect ourselves in some way. Mm -hmm. We're trying to feel mm -hmm. safe again and mm -hmm. we're going resorting to some old uh, pattern. Mm -hmm. So the tapping helps us to calm down and, and get into that safe space as it is, it allows us to go looking at those things that might've started that, like right. what happened right. with Cindy in the third grade. Part of me right. doesn't want to go looking at that. And I feel stress every time I try to imagine it, but the tapping helps us calm down nice. and feel safe. It's like, Hey, it's, it's okay. It's okay for me to go in here and look at what's mm -hmm. there. And mm -hmm. now I can start to resolve things that uh, have, have been controlling me at an unconscious level. Mm. I love it. I love the boost of the tapping in that whole, cause it's very much how I coach with food. You know, we're using this example of the cookies. Like it's very much like, Hey, 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 like come at, I, I say, give yourself a big, huge hug. Like, it's okay. Like how you be, if you were like a camp counselor for little kids and the little kid was being really hard on himself cause he ate cookies and he's yeah. trying not to be fat or something <laughs> like you wouldn't be like, Oh my gosh, bro. Are you even trying? Like, what is wrong with you? You, you, you would give him a huge hug and yes. you would wipe the tears off his cheeks and you would say, come here. And if you you're a good counselor, if you're Unfortun a good counselor, yeah. unfortunately, <laughs> most, if not all of us have had a lot of bad counselors That's true. And, and who were doing the best they could. They were do, right. co counseling, coaching, whatever the way they'd been coached. Shame, yeah. Right. You know, discipline, pain. Do you even want this? <laughs> yes. You know, what kind of a loser are you? You know, <laughs> and if, and if, and if we get healthy that way, we're, we're going to still be miserable. <laughs> so, exactly. Uh, we're, yeah. We're you tortured. can get the, 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 the quote unquote results that way. Uh, if you're oh, yeah. um, honestly like in the deepest throes of pain and, you know, self-abuse, like you can get fit that way. You can get rich that way, you know, but you're not going to be like happy. happy. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> not well, really. Darn it. I have all the money and I've got the perfect body, <laughs> but I'm still miserable. I wonder why that is. I don't know. Could be the self, uh, you know? Yeah. Oh, so, and then it's hard to stick with it because it's like, well, I can't right. keep up. It's pressure, thing, but, pressure. It's never ending pressure yeah. to but maintain it. Comes to a it. place of, of self-love and self-compassion. It's like, yes, I want to comfort myself and I have healthier ways of taking care right. of myself than the cookies. And I, and I want to feel comfort now and I want to have the healthy yeah. body. So yeah. there are ways for me to get both in a very mm -hmm. self-loving way mm -hmm. and using this, the, the tapping to clear the stress mm -hmm. and break up those old patterns of thinking yeah. that we can do it in a healthy way. And, and it's also looking at whatever the goal is, 
the money, the body, whatever, the extent to which we don't have what we say we want tends to be the extent to which we are resisting it. Because mm -hmm. going back to the safety thing, at some level, it doesn't right. feel safe. Right. But I'll ask people, close your eyes, take a deep breath and imagine what you want. You know, imagine the money in the bank account. Imagine yourself looking in the bathroom mirror and going, my God, I look fantastic. And then check in with your body. Notice what you're feeling. And on a scale of zero to 10, how safe does it feel to have this? And people, nice. when, I, when I do this with folks, they'll sometimes just say, oh my God, it's a two. And I'm like, bingo, now you know why you don't have it. Yeah. And I'm going back to the uh, idea of having a small kid. If you had a small kid who was invited to a birthday party and you looked at where the party was and you said, on a scale of zero to 10, how safe is it for my kid to go to that party? <laughs> If it was a two, would you let your kid go to that party? Definitely and not. The answer is no for anyone else. Just, you know, yeah. <laughs> not up on their parenting. So recognizing I, I'm not a loser for not being healthier. I'm not a loser for not being richer. Right, I have right. totally been taking care of myself based on old misunderstandings. Nice. Someone else's misunderstanding being told that, uh, you know, if, if you're in better shape, people are only going to want you for one thing and they're not going to, you know, they won't care right. about your mind or your personality. Right. If you have money, then you're going to be rich and greedy and yeah. a terrible person and only poor it's people selfish. are nice. And right. all of, yeah, all of these mm -hmm. things. So it's like, I don't want to be that. I don't, that's not safe. So right. we are brilliantly, brilliantly stopping ourselves. And even when we beat ourselves up, I'm, I'm so stupid for eating those cookies. I'm so stupid for spending all my money. I'm so stupid for not showing up to that job interview that was going to change my life. No, it was brilliant. You're brilliantly protecting yourself from something that you uh, at some level yeah. are convinced is not safe. So whatever you want, you say you want that you don't have, ask yourself, why does it not feel safe? And, mm. and then from my book, <laughs> tap to clear whatever that fear is and go, is that really dangerous? Is that really, wow, that, who told me that? And mm. why did I consider them an authority? Mm. I love this because um, so many, you know, I've been, I used to eat very unhealthily and be overweight. I have four kids and as I went on the big journeys, you know, and now I'm in that more, you know, healthy, like I just want to feel good. And there's lots of healthy things that also taste good. You know, it's very free flowing now. Um, but in, when I was in the throes of all that transitioning, I noticed that like, let's say I ate a bunch of junk food or something and I've already gotten pretty far on my health journey. It wasn't even conscious thoughts mostly, right? Like I would just, just like didn't happen next moving on with my day. Like it was this ignoring type thing ignoring the baby behind the baby gate. Right. Yeah. And it wasn't until I created a sense of safety in myself of like, let's let that allowed me to even look at it. I, I found patterns in me that had to do with eating that were connected to like childhood traumas, like dating, which kind of type of men I'm entertaining in my life, like showing up for myself, what my inner child needs. Like it was all in there yeah. through just binging on some donuts. You know, I was like, wow, but I couldn't get there. I couldn't find any of it yeah. until I created that safe space of like, it's okay. I'm not judging you or yes. it's not bad that you did that. Like it, it just, Hey, what's wrong? You know, like, it's, yeah. it's okay. You know? And so I love that tapping. It's so beautiful because it's such a clear path on how yeah. to get there. It's like, here it is. Yeah. And there's a, you know, ancient wisdom combined into it with, you know, using those acupressure, acupuncture points. So yeah. really cool. I need to start utilizing this in my coaching more. <laughs> um, I recommend it on a daily basis. We, ha we have physical hygiene, like brushing our teeth and taking a shower. And most of us nice. do it on a daily basis, whether we need it or not. We don't wait a couple of weeks until people are holding their nose around us and going, oh, that's right. I haven't <laughs> taken a shower in a while. But with stress, we're all carrying at least ambient levels of stress, yeah. most of the time, far more than that. Right. Especially as we're walking around with a, with a cell phone that's constantly saying, here's something else to be upset about. And right. we don't have a way of processing that. We don't have any, uh, most of us don't have any emotional or energetic hygiene. Nice. And so mm. to, to do something like tapping on a daily right. basis, even if a few minutes, just to downregulate that stress and allow yourself right. to to be in a place, better, better place, because when that stress builds up, uh, we go into fight or flight 
you know, sometimes right. at subtle levels, but our prefrontal cortex, our rational mind that knows how to get to our goals goes bye-bye <laughs> and we're in survival yeah. mode. Survival mode is like box of cookies. That's all I did. All right. I can think is box of cookies. Drive through yeah. like, or, you know, exactly. addiction, sex or cigarettes or whatever. Absolutely. Whatever we've learned as a coping mechanism, when right. we get st stressed enough, that's all we can think of. And Right. Because we're not taking care of our stress on a regular basis, we don't even know how close we are to that breaking point of just grabbing something right. that's going to do us possibly tremendous damage. Yeah, uh, and we and we just go into it. And so, yeah, allowing ourselves to be in that safe space of going, what is it that I want? What is it that I need? Where does it hurt? And mm. how do I make myself? Mm. Uh, how do I allow myself to feel better now? Mm, I love it because it's such a clear and concrete, like, you know, because I, I love what you're saying in terms of hygiene, you know, emotional, what'd you say? Emotional and or energetic hygiene, energetic hygiene. Yeah. Because yeah, you don't wait until you've gained 50 pounds <laughs> to, to then go, Oh, I mean, at least hopefully not, you know, <laughs> well, a lot of us do. <laughs> yeah. A lot of us do. At least I guess after you've been on a health journey or, you know, that's part of your life, you know, yeah. it's, it's preemptive, you know, it's just, you, you take care of yourself. Right. But having, you know, I, it's like, okay, I meditate, I have boundaries around my work hours and, you know, I, I randomly choose silence sometimes or, but like, that's such a simple practice, like an actual practice, like lifting weights or walking or like, yeah. you know, intermittent fasting, like it's an actual practice that you can do to manage your stress levels. And you can do and, it anywhere. And yeah. And again, while the wording can be so beneficial, you can get the benefits of tapping without saying anything. Nice. And, nice. uh, and if you're not sure what to say, I mean, that's why I have, you know, 1400 videos or something like that on YouTube to give people wording to, to use, <laughs> but you can like I said, say affirmations or prayers or, nice. or whatever, just, uh, if, if you find that helpful, but it's something that wherever you are, just go, okay, I've got, I'm feeling some stress. Something's a little bit off, mm. or you may not even be aware of any stress, but think, eh, no one's looking. Let me see if I can help myself feel even better because nothing's so right. good. It can't get better. Right. That's what, what you were saying earlier about, yeah. you know, about, you know, look at it. Life, life is great. How much yeah. better can it get? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I want to clear my way to, to get to that. I mean, I, right. I work with people at all levels. I, I work with people who are the, the highest levels of success in their fields. And it's like, yeah, but I want more. I want to, I want to feel better. I want to do better. I want to achieve more. Yeah. I, I think any, anyone who's been through, uh, impacting life experience where they are now living in a reality that they didn't know existed because they made, you know, discovered some tools and things that brought them into it. It's like, once you have experienced that, you're like, wait, so is there another, <laughs> is there, is there, is, you know, I think that's the quest of, you know, human evolution, right. Is like exploring that what's possible for us. And yeah. this is a really helpful tool for that. Um, okay. If you guys, probably most of you aren't watching on video, but if you are, you got some Michelangelo <laughs> artwork in the background and you call your process, the Michelangelo process. So can you, can you share about that? Yeah. So yeah, I have, I have Michelangelo's David is my favorite piece of art since the first time I saw it when I was a kid. Uh, and now everywhere in my office, anywhere you look, you're going to see a David. Um, mm. Because not only is it my favorite piece of art, but later when I got into this work and I was thinking about, Michelangelo said that the, the statues were already there, perfect inside the marble. And all he had to do was chip away what didn't belong to reveal the masterpiece that was already inside. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, that's the perfect metaphor for this work. Our best self is already inside. Yes. Our healthiest, most successful, happiest version of ourselves is already in there. And we just need to use our fingertips and chip away yeah. what doesn't belong. The, the, the anger, the sadness, the guilt, the shame, the fear, the unworthiness, all of those things that we're doing the best we can based on our mindset, based on the programming we have, but most, if not all of that stuff is misunderstandings. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, just using our, uh, tapping our, their fingertips, like chipping away with the, uh, the hammer and the chisel to just chip that stuff away. And then we reveal that, uh, that masterpiece inside. 
Mm, I love that. I, I, I think, uh, you know, you have a long 20 plus year trajectory and coaching and all these things. And I think that's the point where all of us get who have been on that kind of quest of, you know, it's like, oh yeah, I'm not like becoming better. Or, or, or I'm not, you know, evolving myself per se. I'm just like le learning how to like let go of all these programs and muck and confusion and automatic reactions. Like I'm learning how to get, stay more in touch with who I really am. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> so that essence that, that mm -hmm. you know, whether mm -hmm. you call it peace or love or <laughs> yeah, exactly. whatever, you know, that ideal core. Yeah. it's in there <laughs> yeah okay so um by the way guys his website is tapwithbrad.com so you know you, what's your is your youtube channel tap with brad yes also okay and then like i'm just curious like how i know you have programs and a membership and all that but like wh where would you recommend somebody start you know how can you help somebody with getting started if they want to try this out as like a daily practice or they want to go a little deeper yeah, absolutely. So the easiest thing is if you go to tapwithbrad.com, I have a free five-day program. Uh, actually, there's two different ones. There's one called Tap Into Your Best Self. Okay. And then there's another one called Success Beyond Belief. Okay. So uh, either of those, the free five-day programs that uh, introduce you to tapping, how to do it, and then take you through uh, videos designed specifically to help you, you know, move forward in a particular way. And so there's workbooks and things like that, but, uh, and, and also you can just follow the links to go to YouTube and find, you know, my, most of my videos are somewhere between five and 10 minutes and, uh, you know, whatever is going on for you, there's probably a tap for that, you know, there's yeah, money and issues or health issues or relationship issues, uh, cover a whole bunch of, of different topics. Mm. Okay. I have, thank you. And I can't encourage it enough guys. We'll link that up in the show notes. And I just, I had to ask you, cause like, I mean, you're doing this, but you've also, you have your best-selling children's book and, you know, freedom at your fingertips, your book. And, you know, you've been working in these, I don't know, kind of very interesting circles of yeah. personal growth, you know, like Jack Canfield and Bob Doyle and all these guys, you know, yeah. um, what has been your experience in terms of, I guess, you know, you've done like your, you, I'm sure you've worked with a lot of impressive human beings on the earth. Like what is it about tapping that you think has, has, has made such an impact on people versus all of these other, you know, there's all these other strategies. Like, what do you think it is that has made tapping just like go boom, kind of really stick or really make an impact on people? What? Well, it's, it's your the, thoughts we call the somatic component, the, the, the mm. physical component of it, mm. because so many of these things, and, and I, I love personal development. I, you know, yeah. long before I met Jack Canfield, I was a big fan of his work. And uh -huh. I, you know, all these people that I used to listen to on Nightingale Conan tapes and things like that nice, when I was, a, nice. when I was a struggling actor and trying to get that mindset. Amazing. And, but it's all just for the head. And it, right. and it, and it's all inspiring and stuff, but it doesn't, um, mm. I'm not going to say it doesn't because it, it benefits a lot of folks, but there for, for many people, there's the, these fears going on inside. So when we listen to a lot of this stuff, it, we get excited about it, but we're not able to address the, the fear. And so it, it's like, if you have a hot air balloon and it's, you know, it's tied down, the, the basket's tied down with, with ropes and things like that. So you pump it full of hot air and it starts to lift up off the ground, but those ropes are still there. Right. So you're still trying to pump hot air up there. <laughs> and eventually it's like you run out yeah. of uh, gas, and, yeah. be, but it can't rise up because of those ropes, those, all those fears and doubts of, mm. so it's like we, you know, Simon Sinek talks about why. You know, you got to mm -hmm. find your why. Uh, mm -hmm. I think maybe Nietzsche said the the person who has a big enough why can handle any how. Yeah. So we look at why do I want this goal? We also have to look at why not. Because right. <laughs> if we just sit there and focus on why I want it, why I want it, but it's still mm -hmm. not happening because I'm not addressing why not. Well, because the basket of the balloon is still tied down to a stake on the ground. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I can sit there and, you know, 
pump hot air in there till the cows come home, but it's not going to rise because yeah. I'm not addressing that fear that's saying, please, please don't let it happen. We make right. our vision boards. We go, I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited. And the sun, subconscious mind is like, it's so cute when you do that. You go ahead, you fantasize all you want, but we're going to make sure it doesn't happen because there are consequences. We have learned that having that would be bad. So mm. we're going to we're going to let you play with your fantasy, but we're going to make sure it doesn't happen. Wow. So wow. And that stuff is in our body. And mm -hmm. so if we don't address it where it is, then uh you know, it it can have, obviously it has happened for many people. I, you know, certainly there are plenty of people throughout history who've been very successful without tapping. Right. But, but it's to the extent that they don't have that resistance. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. So what um, I did, a I did a video recently called the one thing all successful people have in common. <laughs> And, uh, you know, there's all these, there's all kinds of programs about, well, all successful people do these five things. It's like, mm -hmm. that's nonsense. Throughout history, there have been plenty of successful right. people who didn't do all five or any of those five things. Right. But the one thing all successful people do have in common is they have a, at least some willingness to experience that success. Now, oh, wow. it may be with, uh, at a cost. So there are people who have all kinds of money, but their health is terrible or their relationships suck and things right. like that, but they were at least willing to allow the money. So we, and the, whatever stops us, it, it tends to be at a stress level in our body. Yeah. So with this technique and, and tapping to downregulate that stress, we are able to address what we might be afraid of, see whether it's true or not. And then create this allowance and go, you know what? It would be okay for me to have mm. the money. It would be okay for me to have better health. It would be okay mm. for me to be in a relationship. Mm. You know, we're, we're always coming up with these things. And it's at that subconscious level, like you were saying earlier, right. we're not aware of the games we're playing. We're, we're like a chess grandmaster who's thinking 50 moves ahead. Right. So we, we might say, you know, I really would love to be in a relationship. I just never meet anyone. And then we're in the grocery store and we see this attractive stranger a little distance away. And our mind starts going into chess master mode. When I could go over and say hi to that person and they might say hi back and we might strike up a conversation. We might find we have some things in common. We might make a date and we go out on that first date and it goes really well. We'll go on the second date, third date, we move in together and then we get married. And then that person divorces me like the divorce that happened in my, you know, 20 years ago or whatever. And, <laughs> and then, oh, look, there's a sale in aisle two. And we're over in aisle two looking at whatever <laughs> things are there and going, Ah, I wish I could meet someone. <laughs> and all of this has happened. This whole chess match right. has, has gone played out at an unconscious level. Right. And we are blissfully unaware yeah. of how we have once again dodged a bullet. You know, part of it's like, whew, you know, dodge that bullet. Yeah. And whether it's with a relationship or or health or money or whatever it is. Again, the extent to which we don't have it is the extent to which we're resisting it because it doesn't mm -hmm. feel safe at, at, at some mm. level. Mm, 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 mm. profound and the somatic piece really speaks to me i mean obviously it's you know very aligned with the work i do and i have one last final really weird question for you that i'm like maybe, i was thinking maybe i'll wait till we're done recording to ask him this but we'll we'll go ahead and throw it out there <laughs> oh what the have heck you, and have you ever um have you ever uh combined tapping with uh, like holotropic breath work like the full hour breath work sessions with tapping have you ever personally tried that? I haven't done it with that. There are some aspects of uh, of tapping that involve some breath work. Okay. Doing doing different kind of breathing techniques and and obviously there's all kinds of amazing. I'm sure. Yeah. Work. Probably there's somebody that's like that's what I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> probably because one of the great things about tapping is it it, it is so a, such a complementary thing. I never look at it yeah. as alternative therapy. It's a complementary therapy and you can work it in with talk yeah, therapy totally. or breath Anything. work or yoga or, you know, all of these <laughs> different things because it's, it, it's so simple. Yeah. So I, I always okay. encourage folks. Yeah. If you've got something that works, I only, add this I, in. I just asked because um, for me, uh, breath work has been become something that I've relied on as a coach when I can tell it's just in somebody's body. Um, I'm a big fan of, of Candace Pert's work. She oh, wrote yeah. a book called, well, it's really just a speech, but your body is your subconscious mind. And she was really big on 
your subconscious mind is your body, you know? And I think a lot of us have experienced some level of that if we've done a lot of subconscious work. It's like you can feel it, like the knot in the stomach, right? Like it, it's where is this, right? And so anyway, I was like, you're, you're inspiring me because I'm like, I want to try – Oh, well, if I can, I might have to have somebody else do it for me because you're pretty, <laughs> you can't really move very well when you're deep in it after, you know, 40 minutes or so. But yeah. I think that is something I would like to try out um, because I have, that's, that's the thing that I have um, started recommending to clients to go do, to get those somatic releases. Yeah. But this is so I accessible. I think it was Candace who said, um, who came up with the phrase um, uh, body, mind, because you know, okay, or or, or mind body, okay, how, but but because there's always been this Cartesian split between there's the mind and then there's right. the body, right? And so with with mental things, you just deal with the mind and right. physical things, exercise, you deal with the body, mm -hmm. and I I think I I think so. That, I that she, she came really... up with it said it's not either or it's it it's the whole mm -hmm. it's, it's and so. And, and going back to the, you know, the point about why is tapping so effective? Because it deals with mind and body at the same yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so simple. Or just like we can do it right now. Like yeah. it's so simple and accessible. So thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing with us. Um, By the way, guys, Brad has over a thousand videos on YouTube with tens of millions of views probably pushing 50 million views at this point you Something know like since you're... <laughs> <laughs> um so really appreciate you taking the time and coming and sharing with my people today i hope that this inspires them to go check out your website tap with brad or your youtube channel and and try this out for themselves um because and it's it's inspired me to get back on to tapping so thank you because i really i mean i was having like stuff with my kids i'm like bawling <laughs> like these huge epiphanies are coming through and i was like this is good. This is really good. So I've, you know, but I've gotten out of that practice. So I appreciate you coming on and reminding me of how awesome that is to have something so simple and so effective available to us. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure, Tara. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, thank you for the work you're doing. And thanks for this opportunity to share this with everyone. And thank you to everyone who's willing to be open to this idea of uh, tapping on your face and your body because the, whatever <laughs> benefits you get you then spread on to other people so uh, mm -hmm. it's a win-win mm -hmm. situation so thanks for doing yeah. that yeah thank you